Hey everyone, happy to get back on here for a moment with you and offer you some tarot. Um, it seems that it's taking me the end of the month to come and do these tarot readings and I guess that's okay and I'm just following the flow of that which is what seems to be happening. It takes a lot of work to get the podcast out and line everything up and everything else that I'm doing. Um, working in the garden, getting everything, everything prepped for the summer, um, working in the medicinal gardens and weeding and taking care of my children and home while my husband is working. He's been back to work for three or four weeks now and um, it has been a juggle to say the least, but I'm here and I'm learning new ways to be in what my life is right now and get through that. So thank you all for tuning in and continuing to be with me and allow me to share um, with you. Um, I don't know what will come of this tarot reading today. This will be interesting, uh, mostly because of the intense time that we're in. Um, not only do we have a pandemic happening, but we have an uprising happening. And I was speaking to a woman yesterday. I traveled to pick up some of my final medicinal plants that um, I couldn't seed and I needed an herb grower to offer me uh, some plants. So I went and picked them up and she's in her 70s. And we had a nice little chat about her memory of the time in the 60s when something similar as right now was going on. Similar but different. Um, and again, here we are um, as history continues to repeat itself. Uh, as humans continue to evolve in emotional intelligence we've got a long way to go <laughs> and you know that because of the conditions that we are in um, and I hope that you are all doing okay emotionally and um, physically during this time it is extremely intense and now we are curving into the month of June which is going to bring at least two or three more planets are going to go into retrograde as Venus already is and I don't know if Venus has come out of that yet um, and a pretty powerful full moon and an eclipse uh, underneath everything that's happening uh, in the human world, I guess I'll call it, uh, there is some um, things at work going on planetary. And whether we know it or not, we are connected to that and we are feeling that even on a very subtle level. So right now things are really feeling huge almost difficult to process any of it, almost difficult to um, function for some people. Um, and people like me are just going back into the garden and dipping their bodies into the earth for, for some listening, for some wisdom, for some healing, for some uh, reaching, for some grounding and understanding. <sighs> it has been difficult for me to post on social media. It has been difficult for me to speak. Um, I... It's not my place to speak about what's happening in the black communities right now. Um, it's my place to listen. Um, as I have been listening and always learning from um, the black community closest to me. And um, for me, it feels triggering and confusing 
because all my life I have been disconnected from my culture and that disconnection was made long ago uh, like five generations ago um, to what we think um, is called paper genocide which means birth certificates were changed and forged to give information about origins that were incorrect so for me even though I have documents that go two, three generations back that give me some information, I have nothing to prove where I know my heart and my blood come from. So uh, it's been a wayfinding journey and an incredible loss for me, and I feel. I feel the deep anguish and guttural emotions that my fellow humans in the black community and in the indigenous community feel from being broken and torn away from their heart, which lies in their culture, in their community, in their truth of who they are. So, um, I am here and I am doing my best to listen and pay attention as I always do and I come to the table when I am asked to and given the opportunity to speak in my community about um, things that are not okay and I don't really care what anyone thinks of that of me. I will always, always come to the table. <laughs> and I wish that strength and fearlessness in you too. Because um, at the same time, climate change is sweeping through. It's coming. It, it's sweeping around and it's quiet and it's coming. And sometimes I wonder if the only way we can get through that is by coming together, like really fully coming together and combining all of our tools and skills and understandings and knowings to create, you know, a powerful community that can survive. I'm not sure we can do that so broken and divided. Um, but again, that brokenness and division always goes back to emotional health and well-being. There is so much abuse, uh, there is so much destruction of the spirit, of the mind, of the soul, of the earth, of the body, uh, that here we are, many of us unable to communicate, unable to walk across the bridge, unable to reach each other. And it's very scary to me. It's very scary. And so what I turn to in these times is the earth, are the planets, uh, the plants. They have voices too. And they are our ancestors. They are our eldest ancestors, the plants, the planets. They have been here millions of years before the human race. And there's a lot we can learn from them and a lot of information that can be shared through communication. And so I made this commitment when I opened Mountain Hollow Medicinals to do whatever I can in whatever form to offer opportunity for people to reconnect to this wisdom and to, to this ancestry and to remember how to communicate and learn and be of the earth. Um, and part of that journey on your own is your own healing work. And that's just one part. 
and that can be initiated and has been initiated when people come here and sit in the yurt and not just take whatever course or be part of whatever workshop is happening but be present on this land and in this place um, when I got here that is what I was told this place is for and that it is my job to protect it and keep it safe so that others can come and witness and begin that journey in whatever form happens for them but just by being here can trigger that journey and so that is why <laughs> I tirelessly continue regardless of my personal situation and that is why you will continually see me move forward even in times where I am not sure what I'm doing I am following an intuition um, I'm following an inner knowing from listening listening to the land, listening to the land spirits, listening to the feminine spirits that dwell in my home, listening to um, the creatures that live here, everything. And continuing to learn how to listen with more clarity every day. And I hold hope that in that process of healing for individuals, that we will come back into a place of humble compassion and we will relearn how to listen and understand each other better and really see what we're doing really really see what we're doing um, so that is my ramble and I just let that come out because it just came through and I need to trust that and I trust all of you to hear it and receive it in whatever way and for this tarot reading you know I've been feeling the need in my heart to reach out to some really powerful master spirits or ancestors right because in these particular kinds of times we feel an instability we feel frightened our nervous system is responding to what's happening around us um, we can't separate ourselves from feeling the grief and fear and death and darkness that is brewing in areas of the world and in areas of the United States and our nation we are connected through a web um, we are individual but we are made up of the same stuff uh, we are all energy and a lot of us um, work with that energy in different ways whether it be in the dream time or daytime visions daytime um, energy work dream time energy work there's many different ways And I think right now it's important to honor those feelings and sensations that you are connecting to. I think in doing that, you are helping others to process what they can't process. What's happening is extremely traumatic to the people on the streets, the families that are directly affected, and on and on. Um, this ripples, this moves through generations. It's also triggering to the previous trauma that's happened in their, with their ancestors, if you understand what I'm saying. It's rising at the same time. Old wounds. Um, 
and it's not new and I keep getting we're being watched but I don't know exactly what that means I feel like I'm doing the tarot reading already <laughs> oh my gosh um, the living beings are watching us they're observing us um, they're so wise they they are not afraid they are not they watch and so they understand us more than anything uh, because of their long time observation of us and we really must return to their wisdom in whatever way we can and I'll tell you a quick little story before I start the card reading to prove to you that this is possible and that there is a deeper deep 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 magic between humans and plants that many of us have just barely tapped on and when we go to them and when we ask them for their wisdom and their support and their healing the response you get is beyond what the mind can process because it's like magic and the the mind is too logical for that <laughs> however you can work with the mind and and eventually um, open some gateways and and be more receptive to the magic that comes and so yesterday and I posted about this on social media I um, was feeling really too much I was feeling a lot of grief I was having a hard time paying attention to my kids I was a little lost um, really overwhelmed I didn't have any other adults nearby to kinda just check in and give me that you know grounding moment very overwhelmed um, by the news and the pain and suffering that's going on uh, the grief is just tremendous it's just it's so big and so a friend of mine reminded me to go out to the lilacs which are just beginning to bloom here um, thank goodness and it reminded me you know lilacs have been helping me throughout my entire life especially as a child I had a lot of grief in um, even though my parents were alive and with me they weren't really present and they weren't really with me and um, there was this huge disconnect and I was very neglected and in fact very abused and so as a young small person I carried a lot of grief and lilac um, was around a lot and really supported me in that grief um, grandmother energy uh, very soothing very nourishing the, the aromatics uh, the same thing it's just a beautiful it's it's it reminds me of the cedar tree and the cedar tree are like the elders that you go sit in circle with when you just can't take it anymore and you need you need to be held in a safe nourishing way and so I did I went out and I sat with the lilac and I held a flower um, in my hands and I did what I practiced doing and imagining energy from my heart moving into uh, the plant and in an, in an exchange of I'm here and I love you and here's how I feel authentically and I need your support and I'm here to learn and receive from you and as I was doing that and eventually nibbling on some flowers and, and really feeling and receiving and feeling a little bit better out of the corner of my eye was this really bright white thing it was really sharp it really pulled me and so my attention went to that place and I looked and there were these little white flowers I had never seen before in the garden in front of my front porch I'd been working in this garden for weeks I'm reshaping it it's very old it needs some TLC and there they were and they were hidden in a big bush of flocks and if you know flocks it's very thick and tall and it's difficult to see through 
somehow they were like throwing laser beams at me look at me look at me and so I stopped everything I was doing I ran to get my phone to um, use my ID app which is called picture this and it's the best ID app I've ever used in terms of plants identifying plants and I, I very carefully weaved into the garden and got down close to it and I was just in awe of this gathering of these big white star flowers I'd never seen them before what were they I took a picture with my ID and it was the star of Bethlehem which is one of the five major flower essences in the Rescue Remedy blend that's very popular with Edward Box Rescue Remedy and Edward Bach flower essences, um, which I've used many times in my life. Um, Star of Bethlehem is for shock, trauma, grief, and unable to process, having difficulty processing. And, and so I immediately got my um, pendulum because I lean to the pendulum to get more clarity in, in what the plant is asking me to do because sometimes I'm stressed out and overwhelmed and I just need something to help me go deeper. And so I used the pendulum to ask the plant what it wanted me to do, it wanted me to make a flower essence with uh, one flower, yes, only one flower, yes. Uh, which flower and I move it very very gently because I don't want to coax it and then it showed me a yes over this one very big flower there were two huge ones and one of those and so I said some prayers I took the flower put it in water took some of my hair and wrapped it around the plant he said my thanks and immediately moved to make a flower essence and get it in a safe place before the storms were coming um, and the next time I went out there, which was, um, just after the rain that came through, the flowers were gone. I went out there today, the flowers are still gone. They're just not there anymore. And so I went out there and I asked, and they showed up. And it was my job to make the medicine and listen and receive. I finally uh, finished the flower essence today and I need to do a little bit more dowsing. Um, I'm gonna put it up on my website and I'm either gonna put it at a lower cost than I normally do or I'm gonna reach out to uh, the Peace and Justice Center of Vermont um, and get as many bottles as I can out to uh, the black community locally for some kind of support and also use some for myself <laughs> but that is a little story to share with you so that you understand that um, this is very real uh, plant medicine plant magic uh, plant communication is very very real just as real as communicating with spirits in the dream time Communicating with past loved ones in the dream time, um, synchronicities, symbols, um, communicating with each other from a distance. It's very real. So please reach out to your plant allies. If you don't know what they are, ask. See what comes to you. Okay, so... Um, I'm just telling me not to talk yet. Okay. <laughs> um, it's just giving me cards, and I'm just gonna. This is weird. I've never done this before. I'm just going with the flow here, and I'll show you. All right, one is separate. Okay, I think that's it. I've got five cards here. One is separate. I think that'll come in at the end. I've got two like this and two on top of each other like this. And I don't know what this means, but we're just going to go into this and see what comes up. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, just give me a moment here. Um, some of these are upside down. I'm going to turn them right side up. Child of Cups is first. I need a new camera. Um, There's the simultaneous um, celebration and grief of life. This is not new. This is how this is how we were born. We know this before we come into life, into life form, into human form. It's part of the struggle and I'm going back in my mind uh, to the talk around the contract we make before we get here, so... Um, we can't get receive the same growth in the spirit world as we can here. So we come here to experience in order to um, shape shift, change, receive, heal, uh, work through emotional uh, imbalance. Um, and there's a lot of life in that. There's so much life here. There's also much death. Um, it's a, I'm hearing that it's a watery realm. This is a watery realm uh, that it's made of molecular structure of emotion. I'm spitting things out. I'm, I'm not, uh, this, even if it doesn't make sense to me. Um, The human mind creates a narrowness. We are a very curious species. We are the learners. Um, we come here to learn. And even though the mind can contain this narrowness, we have this incredible capability of moving into different worlds, even in this form. We can travel. Um, people call that astral travel. Uh, we can work together in alternative ways and dimensions um, like this and so um, we're at the precipice of a widening of um, A widening of the intelligence of the mind and so it's like squeezing through this really tight space we're very uncomfortable it's in fact painful um, but we must move through this isn't going back we're never going back we can only go forward and so we
will continue to move forward and go. We will continue to go. And each have our individual, important, valid experience, but simultaneously affect the web. Um, the narrowness needs to be expanded. And with that, can release fear. Um, I tend to go for what I fear. What I fear is an indicator of my mind trying to stop me from what I actually need to do. Try to wrap your head around that for a minute. A lot of us fear to speak. We fear to speak up because it's exactly what we're supposed to do. But the mind wants to tell you otherwise because it's uncomfortable because of fear. And so it will create all of these excuses to keep you from speaking on whatever it is. And so um, I have the hermit and it was upside down. I'm just trying to gauge why it's upside down. Um, whether that be a disconnect from ancestry or the wisdom there. Um, in the many lives that we live. Um, and again, tapping into ancestry and the many lives is going to expand the dimension of the mind as well. Um, you're going to see from a much wider perspective. And in doing that, it's much easier to understand what's happening from a from from that wider seat. Do you know what I mean? Um, and we can understand things a little bit better. And it does take. I feel uncomfortable saying this, but it does take some weight off because we realize that there's a bigger something at work here and we may never know what that is but we have to trust it um, and that's one of the biggest challenges of being alive is to trust <laughs> um, I find that a good example is if you're a parent and you bring this fragile human being into the world and you have to trust that the world will keep your little human safe. <laughs> Not easy, right? Um, I'm also getting the the woman of crystals again. The guardian is coming back from my last tarot reading right here. One of my favorite cards in this deck. But in this reading, this is a higher, um, and what I mean by higher is like a higher frequency beings or being communicating with us. Just like I said that we're feeling the subtleties of the changes of the earth and the planets, we're also feeling the subtleties of the communication um, with beings from really far away that are just simply living in a higher frequency because that's where they're at. Um, and I and I think that's why I feel we're being observed and watched, not just by the plants, but from our brothers and sisters in space. I know that sounds woo for a lot of people, um, but there's absolutely no reason to say that they're that doesn't exist, right? Um, and I think, in fact, that they're they're acting as guardians for us. And, and I know in the past there have been um, psychic mediums who have predicted the return of um, other species from other places in, in the universe um, in the last time we may have known them to be here was uh, when the Egyptians 
were building their pyramids and they received help uh, from those beings then. And so what a lot of mediums have said is that their return is to help us. And boy, if you think about it for a minute, yeah, we need a lot of help, right? But the energy that I feel from them is so soothing. It's a high frequency of clarity and clear crystalline knowledge. Um, it's a it's beautiful and I now that I'm kind of more present with it and feeling it I would like more <laughs> my body feels a little better all of a sudden from today I've been aching and in pain and headachey today um, and I'm when I'm tuning into that energy it feels like the power and healing source from our highest healthy seated master ancestors um, that have been guiding us since before we got here and will continue to guide us. It's like having the hands of angels on your shoulders for a moment, if you can imagine that for just a moment, you know. Um, through this mess, we are simultaneously being guided and we're, we're all of us here on earth right now are very brave for being here we are very brave and this is a tremendous amount of growth for all of the spirits here this is a tremendous amount of challenge to surrender to trust and knowing and all of the things that we feel like we have to hold on to so tightly in order to feel safe, we're being asked to surrender. And um, also surrender our knowing and our education and our societal upbringing. And um, I'm happy to do that. But I know, I imagine for some people, it's extremely uncomfortable. Um, and I understand that. I can think of members of my family on my father's side in particular that look at me with big eyes and they just, it's just painful for them to try and understand a different way um, or to be humbled in this way. <clears throat> so please remember that you are fiercely protected and fiercely guided. And there are beings out there that we can connect to. If we can connect to the planets, if you've been following me through these tarot readings and remember back to the time where I had a tarot reading talking to plant the planets, um, please remember that you can do the same. And allow it, allow yourself to receive. And the mind, again, will try to rationalize and kind of put up little barriers for you and it's important to stop doubting what you're receiving the information you get is information uh, some people call it downloads I don't know if you've ever heard of that before people say I'm down I'm downloading information and I'm just sharing it with you it's the same thing we're all capable of doing that and it just takes some practice and some belief and some knowing that um, it's possible and it's real and it's there for you. You have unique downloads meant for you and it's safe and okay to open up to those downloads, especially now, especially at this time of real chaos. We all need each other to kind of be in the place we need to be. Um, to be authentic and loving. That last card is calling me, so I'm going to pull it. <clears throat> it's negativity upside down. I'll turn it right side up and show it to you for a minute. And so this is like a reflection of the of the mind. Um, We are such a unique species. We have this brain that is built 
in a certain way. And it's conditioned over time. And some of us have conditions. But it can be conditioned. And in the basic sense of things, it's conditioned by society and our experiences. And so that is the lens in which we look through. However, that is one lens. And I imagine it in my mind right now to be like this big, when the real lens is really like all the way this big, right? It's so much bigger than our lens individually. Um, and we naturally allow the mind to kind of take over and sabotage ourselves, um, continue on our patterns, continue on our, our repetitive um, feelings of shame and guilt and, and just anything that has come down the line from our family um, and experiences. And... It creates this um, heavy block uh, in our energy field or um, toroidal field is what it's also called that's supposed to have this flow and this movement and if you've done biofield tuning you've heard about this kind of flow um, if you've done Reiki you've heard about this flow too and it wants to be open, it wants to flow, it wants to move, and try to be in balance as best it can. But when you have this big block, um, it's either going to be stagnant and stuck uh, and create illness um, or mental illness uh, or heavy negativity that moves into anger and rage. Feelings of like, I'm stuck, I can't get out, and the only thing I can do is rage, right? It's like trying to break a, out of a glass box. Um, and it's really important that we just simply see that and understand that and remember that we have these incredible energy fields that are part of our body and part of our soul and our spirit and that um, it's very intelligent and it knows what we need and it knows what to do and it has this natural flow and we really need to remember not to hold not to hold on um, when we engage in the toxicities um, or sit with the feeling and engage with the feeling, engage with the emotion, we're kind of holding on at that point and then it's not really moving through you. And so I wonder if we, instead of doing that, and I feel like naturally that's kind of what we do, but instead of doing that, um, we become the observer, right, for instance. And we feel it. We see it, we may even know where it's coming from, we may feel curious about it, um, but we don't need to fully engage, we don't need to sit and have a deep conversation with that particular thing. We can, we can allow ourselves to process it and move through without trying to fix it or trying to let the mind attach to it, you know what I mean? Um, this is difficult to articulate, but I'm trying. Um, It's like the saying, get out of your head, get into your body. Your body is really wise. It knows just what to do. Um, and we get stuck because we think that everything revolves around the brain, and it doesn't. The electric field of the heart is like 15 times bigger than the field of the brain. This space in your body is the biggest feeler that you have. Not this. <laughs> so move that negativity through you and move it out ask the plants for support ask the earth take your shoes off dig your feet into the dirt and ask for help we don't want to hold it we don't want to um, 
create a like a toxic relationship with it. We want to see it, observe it. I understand it. It's valid. However, um, I trust my body and I don't want to keep it. Hopefully that was an okay way to describe that for you. It's very tough to articulate. Um, but we're such complex, intelligent beings, but we have this capability of letting it move through and not holding. And maybe that's a lifelong learning. And I personally am working on that every day myself and um, doing better with it for sure. Um, trying to catch myself when I uh, let it kind of take me down. Um, and allowing myself to feel like I got this, feel like I can, I can do this and it's going to be okay. Believe in yourself, believe in your power, believe in your strength, be courageous, don't be afraid. I think, and I say this coming from a place where I feel 50% safe, right? <laughs> um, and there are people out there that do not have that. So I just want to say that I'm aware of, of that place right now that I'm in. Because at different times of my life, I did not have that safety that I have now. And I don't think I'd be able to, to say these things to you if I was still in those places. Um, I was a very different person. And sometimes I don't, you know, there's... There's negativity here, there's negativity all over, and sometimes I think it's always going to try to get you. It's always going to try to suck some of the goodness out of you, but you can say no. You can choose not to allow it. And maybe something that's helpful for you, for me, what's helpful for me is action. And so if I'm feeling that way and I feel overwhelmed, I just need to, sometimes I'll have a list and I can pick something from that list that's going to help me shift the energy that I'm feeling, remind me that it's okay and that my mind's fucking with me, <laughs> to be frank, um, and that these are the things I can do to shift my focus and, um, and feel better. So what are the things that you can do? The little things. Making an altar. Brewing some tea. Making a tea infusion. Uh, medicine making. Working in the garden. Um, the little things are going to help your nervous system settle down. And once it settles down, you're going to be able to see a little bit clearer. And you're going to know what it is that you can and can't do right now in this very, very chaotic time. And you can do those things um, that you can do. And listen to yourself about those things that are too much that you can't do. And please don't feel guilt about the things you can't do. Because there are people out there that can and they will. <clears throat> We're all in the web, right? Whatever you don't do, someone else is going to because it's part of the web, <laughs> right? So that was really long and I hope that it made sense and I hope that it was helpful. I'm doing my best to speak from an authentic, truthful place at a time where it feels scary to speak. Um, people are angry, people are lashing out. Um, it's it's a difficult um, and complex place to be where we are. <laughs> I'm missing all the beautiful faces that are 
that normally come to the yurt. I'm missing uh, beautiful people in my community that I'm not seeing. I am missing the beautiful people in the black community of Vermont that I'm not seeing because of the pandemic. And I wish I could hold them and be present in their grief. Um, and when in doubt, if you don't know what to do and you just feel like I'm so overwhelmed, I'm going to lose my shit, um, pick up the phone and maybe call someone that you know who's been affected. Call someone that you know, a person of color that's been affected, and just check on them. Um, it's simple, and it's a beautiful gesture, and it's from your heart. Um, I will post a link, a really wonderful link in the notes below from the Peace and Justice Center of Vermont, which I donated to yesterday. Um, I had some money in Mountain Hollow in my business account from the websites that have been sustaining me through this pandemic, and so I sent some money over to the Peace and Justice Center. They're an incredible group of people. I've worked with them quite a bit, and... I have been um, advocating to get them in my local public school for a couple of years now, and the resistance is insanely ridiculous, but I'm not going to stop. <laughs> um, Vermont in particular is a very non-diverse place, and there's a huge lack of education and culture and diversity, and there is racism a lot. And we just need to educate ourselves and we just need to understand. And so they created this beautiful link that offers you an immense amount of ways that you can support the black community right now. Um, even a direct address to um, George Floyd's family. If you want to send a card, a loving, supportive card, that's a beautiful thing to do if, if you can't donate and you can't do some of the bigger things that we are asked to do right now. You can send some words of love to know that, um, let them know that they're not alone. So thank you so much for continuing to support me and be here during this crazy time and, and offer your support to Mountain Hollow as it transforms and, and, and I keep it afloat as best I can. And I hope you're all doing well. And as my Patreon supporters, um, you are very important to me. If you are needing something, if you don't have someone to reach out to, if you don't have a support system right now, if you are needing um, plant medicine but don't have income right now, please know that you can email me at mountainhollowmedicinals at gmail.com privately and um, ask or anything that I have uh, in my web shop and whatever comes to you and I will do my best to offer what I have um, it's just what I want to do so just know I'm sending you all love and healing during this time and I look forward to coming back and offering more to you and also the upcoming podcast for June is a, is a beautiful topic um, and I'll just surprise you with that and I hope you have all been enjoying the gifts and offerings from the podcast guests um, what a treat and I'm so grateful to be able to offer this to all of you so thank you so much um, sending so much love to you all and take care out there take good care of yourselves <laughs>